Hey, welcome everyone to another consumer tech advice video. This time we're going to be talking about the 16 billion password hack. Now, if you want to see the written version of this video, you can find a link to my website in the video description. Now, it's just like a few days ago that I talked about Asus routers getting hacked worldwide, and I demonstrated how to find out if you were hacked, how to fix it, and prevent it from happening ever again, right? We went through it together, and here I am, the bearer of bad news yet again. Or is it? This 16 billion password thing is extremely exaggerated. Like, if you go to Google search, and you type in Reddit, and the 16 billion password, you'll see that the comments are in the hundreds per uh, Reddit thread. But if you go to the actual tech news website, cyber news, the, the actual finding website, there's a zero engagement. No one's actually looking at this. In fact, a lot of uh, news outlets that are reporting about this and are exaggerating it like crazy aren't even pointing their sources to this website. Like, no one's actually reading the source document. And that's what we're really focusing on primarily. Like if you look at Forbes and whatnot, they're like, hey, act now, change your password. All these major news outlets, not just tech news, but actual news websites are causing mass panic. And if you go to Google search and search up the same thing, password chaos, you know, 16 billion passwords. Going down a bit further, you've been hacked. Like <laughs> it's it's not that bad. It, it, this is just clickbait garbage. And we're gonna talk about just how to take it easy. For example, if you take it for consideration, this should be the main red flag if you're not tech savvy. Passwords for Facebook, Google, and Apple. How is that possible? How is it that these all these services for these companies all got hacked at the same time? It is nearly impossible. So how is it that this is happening? It's clickbait titles to make you panic and read what they're saying. Now there is merit to this. I'm not saying that we're just gonna scrap it all together, but I think we should look at the source article, Cyber News, that found this, and I'll put a link to their website in the video description. You can read the article for yourself, which they are continuously updating. I've been reading it for about 24 hours now. I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna make a video about it, but they have been updating and changing it. And we'll talk about why these type of things happen often. It's just the number 16 billion is exaggerated. And when this happens again in the future, you shouldn't panic. And how to prevent this from happening again in the future as well. So we're going to take this opportunity for me to educate you as well. So going through the article itself, long story short, bad actors in the cybersecurity world, bad actors are like hackers, people with malicious intent and whatnot, are using info stealing software to install on your devices potentially and stealing your information. It could be crypto information. It could be username and password for various websites and blah, 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 blah. And all of that information was compiled, but in numerous databases okay this is the key thing this is not new information a lot of it in fact cyber news themselves admitted they have no idea how much is new and how much of it is old it's just that someone took all this information and consolidated it into a single database which accumulated to 16 billion accounts so it's possible that you had yourself compromised before maybe five years ago six years ago and you already implemented new better security and you're fine Right, And we'll talk about how to make sure you're covered shortly, but let's just continue with the story itself. So it's important to know like that you have stuff in the hundreds of millions, some in the millions, some in the billions, then you consolidate up to 15 billion, 978 million, blah, 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 like that huge number. And that's where you get the 16 billion. However, it's important to note that some of these news websites that I looked at online are actually saying there's 16 billion accounts. How is that possible when there's 8 billion people? So, you know, some people have two accounts on Facebook. This is again, a complete lack of common sense. You know, I have one account for Google. I have one account for Facebook. I have another one for Apple, another one for Microsoft. Like I have different accounts for different services. That's why they, ha they can accumulate to 16 billion. Like this is not complicated. Now, cyber news is a little guilty of kind of causing a little bit of a panic here because when you scroll down a bit and they, to quote them, this is not just a leak. It's a blueprint for mass exploitation with over 16 billion login records exposed. Cyber criminals now have unprecedented access to personal credentials that can be used for account takeover, identity theft, so on and so forth. What's especially concerning is that the structure and the re recency of these data sets, these aren't just old be uh, breaches being recycled. This is a fresh weaponizable intelligent S scale. So again, this is a little bit misleading, this quote. It's correct. There could be fresh new data being imported into this database. However, people are getting hacked every day. Every day people are getting hacked. So for new exposed credentials to be populated in a database or just happens to be in this one with 16 billion is not unheard of. People get hacked every day. That's why like say, for example, in the United States, the FBI are having a really tough time keeping up with hackers because people getting, keep getting their credentials exposed. This is not new information. So again, another cause for panic, which is not necessary. 
In fact, this story is still ongoing and Cyber News admittedly themselves said, we don't even know how many are duplicate records, right? It's just like I said, you could have duplicate records, you could have different accounts for different services. So that's the story in a nutshell. Is there a legitimate concern here? Yes, but should you go into a panic? Absolutely not. And here's why. So if we take Google, for example, okay? I use Android and I use Google for a lot of my services like YouTube and so on and so forth. Although I set up my account for um, authentication that is not your typical 2FA, okay? 2FA, you get your security code, it generates uh, a new number every like 30 seconds and whatnot because some people are like, well, technically bad actors can hijack your web browser cookies sessions and then use that 2FA code for their own malicious intent. It can get past 2FA in that manner. Technically, that is true. However, my account is set up in such a manner that if I were to log into my Google account, YouTube account, anything tied to my Gmail account on any new device, it doesn't matter what it is, even in my own home on the same network, it will not work because I'll get a prompt on my phone saying, hey, were you the one that tried to log in? Yes. Okay, the number on the screen is 64. Press 64 on your phone to validate it's actually you. And you hit 64 and then it logs in. Like, this is a surefire way to protect your Google account. So for me, I have absolutely no concern with changing my password here. Like I've been using the same password for over 10 years. I just haven't had a need to change it because the security is just so well locked down. I actually have the same setup for my Microsoft account that the Microsoft Authenticator, I'm not using a typical 2FA service like built in my 1Password manager, which I'll talk about shortly. I'm using the Authenticator app, which has the exact same function. Where the concern comes in for most people, especially here in Canada, and I'm reading up on the US, is banking websites. I don't understand why the government hasn't stepped in like over a decade ago, which is absurd, and said that you cannot have 2FA based on your phone number because SMS swapping, SIM swapping, is a very common practice because a lot of these banking websites, again, in Canada and US, I'm not sure about the rest of the world, is that when you log in, it'll say, okay, now we're going to send you a text message to your phone number to validate you, except people can SIM swap your phone number easily. It happens quite often, which is quite scary. And some banking services, like some of the major ones here in Canada, like the top big ones, don't have like open source um, connectivity to some of the best 2FA methods available. So in that case, do you want to change your password for your banking? Sure. How many bank accounts do you have? Probably not a lot. It's not a lot of work. But to go around to change your password for over 50 services like Facebook, Meta, your banking, your credit card information, PayPal, eBay, it's absurd. Like even eBay has the same authentication method with their app that without my phone physically in hand, unlocked, you cannot log into my eBay account. And that's one thing you should do, is that everywhere you can have 2FA set up, set it up. Anywhere you can have like some sort of passkey method, passkey doesn't really use a traditional 2FA uh, ever-changing code, like every 30 seconds it cycles a code. It requires like some sort of device where you have to authenticate from. Without that device, it doesn't matter what anyone does, they cannot access your information, and that is a beautiful thing. It's a little bit more headache to set up, but once it's done, it's completely peace of mind because these data breaches happen very often. In fact, if you ever want to know if you got breached, just go to a website called Have I Been Pwned? Now, there's a few websites that offer this service, but this is the most popular one by far, in which like these security experts try to help you see if you've been pwned, you know, if your password has been compromised for your uh, information. So for example, if you go to this website and just type in your email, that's it. What it'll do is list a whole bunch of services that email is associated with. So let's say, I don't know, I'm just making it up, like eBay. They say, hey, eBay was hacked back in 2020. I'm just making it up, okay? I'm not saying it has, but I'm just making it up you know, you might have to change your password because your password is associated, sorry, your email is associated with eBay and you had an account back then, you should change it because you probably got compromised. What this website tries to do is scrape um, exposed databases of stolen credentials in a safe way. Not They're not trying to steal information. They're trying to help you understand maybe you should change your password for services X, Y, Z. However, this website does cause false positive sometimes. So for example, when I first started getting popular, you're, you're talking like almost eight, nine years ago, I was at work um, and because I, I work in the IT industry and my manager at the time was making fun of me. He's like, hey, let's type in your personal email and see if you got hacked. I was like, sure, let's put it in here. Lo and behold, it showed up for a tech news website. Except for that tech news website, I didn't make a username and password. All I did was put my email in for a newsletter. That's it. I had nothing stolen, nothing compromised. So I had to explain to my manager like, yo, this, this is a false positive and here's why. So just be mindful that when you use this website, if you see something there that looks a bit funky, it might be a false positive. But this website is trying to help you. And there's other services that use this as well. Now talking about password managers, I actually use 1Password in my daily usage and I use it with me and my wife. 
uh, password managers, long story short, is basically an encrypted type of database that rests locally on your machine or with services of the service provider. So there's like one password, Bitwarden, uh, Keeper are some of the top three I can think about. Um, everything is encrypted and it's all hashed. So no one, including employees there, according to their audits, can see your information. It's just not accessible. So the beautiful thing about these type of services is that when you open up one password, in my example, I have to type in my master password. This is the only password I have to memorize. And then from there, I have access to all my username and passwords. And then it includes my Google and all that good stuff information. And the good thing about these type of services, at least in one password, my example, is that it'll say, hey, when you're signing up for a new website, it'll say, hey, we suggest using these random generated long string of characters that you don't have to memorize. It's a bunch of gibberish you'll never memorize, but by using one password, it makes it extremely complicated. And that means every single service you have has a dis different password across different services. So that means if website A, you have a service gets hacked, but you have a bis different password on website B, you don't have to change your password on website B. You only have to change your password on website A. The problem with most people is that they use the same username and password on everything. So if one website gets hacked, that website and password is exposed now to every website is linked to. So that's the one thing to keep in mind about uh, password managers. Some of them also have built-in 2FA modules, like 1Password. It has all my 2FA built into it, so I don't have to go to my phone for certain services that don't support these like passkey functions. I can just use 1Password, it's all there. It's super convenient. The lastly, one thing that a lot of people don't talk about, and I think this is important, is that some major companies like Amazon, Facebook, what they'll do is even if someone has your credentials, and you don't have 2FA enabled and you log in, you usually get an email alert saying, hey, we noticed a new login from this location based on the IP address. So if someone are logging to my account based in like Tokyo, I know immediately, oh, oh, I got hacked. I don't know why my account was used in Tokyo. The gist of it here is that don't panic, but you should be practicing good security practices. If you don't know what something is on the internet, don't click it. It's the same thing I used to tell my kids when they were small playing at the park and used to pick up stuff off the floor. I'm like, hey, do you know what that is? No then don't pick it up. It's the same thing I used to tell people at work because I've had various titles, manager of IT and security, senior manager of IT and security, head of IT and security. Hey, do you know what that website is that you clicked? No, I'm like, so don't click it. Adults have to be told the same thing like a child. So just do that. Don't click on something if you don't know what it is. If you really need to go to that website, try to research on it. Try to use a password manager. You, you do have to typically pay money for them. Some of them are open source, but just be cautious with that. Uh, again, the ones I mentioned earlier are pretty good. They're not that expensive. I would rather pay, I think I'm paying like 60 bucks for the whole year, that than to have one of my accounts compromised and lose hundreds or thousands of dollars. And simply just the headache of trying to change all my passwords as well, it could take several hours. And that's pretty much a wrap. So I do hope you learned something. If you found this video useful, be sure to check my social links and website link in the video description. Hit the like button, subscribe. It literally helps my channel grow. And thanks for watching.